ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستهديه ونستغضيه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح للامه فكشف الله به الغمه وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذريته ومن دعا بدعوته واتبع سنته وسار على دربه واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا أما بعد فقد صح من دعاء النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the dua He's asking Allah Jannah and whatever leads to it whether it be a saying or an, an act and he's asking the law of protection against the hellfire be it a saying or an act so we need to know what leads to Jannah and what leads away from the hellfire to check ourselves and to know whether we are on the right path or on the wrong one to correct ourselves if we still have a chance to do so so one of the ways Actually, the one, the first and the top one, the top way that leads to Jannah is seeking knowledge, learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith, وَمَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَّلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِهِ طَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Whoever goes in a way, whoever starts in a way that or where he is seeking knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open for him a way to Jannah. So seeking knowledge, which knowledge we talk about is whatever knowledge that makes you humble, that makes you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is the fruit of knowledge. Allah said in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ الْعِلْمُ الَّذِي وَرْدِثُ الْخَشْيَةِ وَالْعِلْمُ النَّافِعَ وَمَا سِوَاهُ لَا يَنْفَعَ فَالْعِلْمُ لَوْ تَعَلَّقَ الْإِنسَانُ بِالْقُرْآنِ لكنه لا يخشى الله فعلمه وبال عليه ولو تعلم الإنسان الفيزياء والكيمياء وقاده ذلك إلى خشية الله عز وجل فهذا هو العلم الذي النافع ولو كانت له نية في طلب ذلك العلم فطريقه طريق إلى الجنة So the knowledge which we talk about is what, whatever knowledge that makes you humble that makes you fear Allah that makes you know Allah better Whatever knowledge achieve this goal as a beneficial knowledge and whatever way you take to learn this knowledge, that way actually is leading you to Jannah according to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to the beneficial knowledge in Surah Fatir. أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ أَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَخْرَجْنَا بِهِ ثَمَرَاتٍ مُخْتَلِفًا أَلْوَانُهَا so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing our attention to the fact that he sent water, rains from the sky, by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings about, brings out plants, trees, etc. And fruits of different colors. And he's drawing our attention also to other signs of his power, which is here, different mountain tracks. Different mountain colors. Judadun, yani turakun, turukun, jam'a judda. Turukun, bidun, wa humrun, mukhtalifun, alwanuha, wa gharabi busun. So some of these tracks in the mountains are white in color, some are red, some are black, dark black. Wa min al nafi wa dawabi wa al anami mukhtalifun, alwanuhu kadalik. And from among people and animals, there are different colors, colors as well. And then the conclusion of the ayah is إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Indeed, those who have knowledge fear Allah. When you read the word knowledge 
or the scholars, or the knowledgeable people in this context, your mind will go first to what is mentioned of all these sciences, mentioned in the ayah. The sciences which tell you about plants, which tell you about mountains, which tell you about people, which tell you about all these different colors and different types and diversity of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this knowledge, if you are learning with the intention or with the purpose of knowing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will lead you to, to be humble, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that will lead you to what is mentioned in the ayah next. The ayah after this also is amazing. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ أَنَّمَا يَحْشَى اللَّهِ مَعَ إِنَّ اللَّهِ عَزِنَا غَفُورِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرَّةً وَعَلَانِيَةً يَرْجُونَ تِجَارَةً لَنْ تَبُوكَ So, that will lead you to, to learning. Knowledge will learn, lead you to act, to good deeds. To what the ayah said after that, which is, indeed those who recite the book of Allah. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ And establish prayer. And spend out from what we give to them in private and in public. They are helping very profitable business, very profitable commerce. Tijarata al tabur. So that's what you are looking for. And that's what knowledge, beneficial knowledge, lead a person to. So the first way to Jannah is learning. We need to do this ourselves. When you go to a masjid, when you go to any place where you are learning, to your college, to uni, to school, when you send your children to school in the morning, teach them, educate them these principles. If they do this, and if you manage to do this, they will be walking back and forth in the Jannah, in the ways of Jannah. Yes, the ways of Jannah, as the Prophet ﷺ said. Another way, من عاد مريضا من عاد مريضا فهو في خرفة الجنة أو في خرف الجنة حتى يرجع يعني ما معنى هذا الخرفة أو خرف الجنة أو كلمة نحوها هو الطريق بين بستانين طريق محفوف بالنخل والفاكهة وأشجار الثمار المختلفة من الجانبين so the Prophet said, when you go to visit someone who is sick, you will be walking in the way of the harvest of Jannah until you return. So it is as if you are walking in the way which is surrounded by fruit trees from different tribes on both sides until you return. So where are we from this? Do we visit the sick? Do we ask for the brothers whom we don't see for a while? Do we visit our relatives, our brothers? في سبيل الله The Prophet said من عاد مريضا أو زار أخا له في الله ناداه مناد بأن طبط وطارت لك الجنة وقال الله في ملكوت عرشه عبدي زار فيا وعلي قراء فلم يجد له ثوابا إلا الجنة So Whenever anyone, any Muslim, visits a brother for the sake of Allah, or visits a sick person for the sake of Allah, he will be called from the heavens. Allah will say, my servant visited my other servant for my sake. His hospitality is my duty. And Allah will find any, anything to present to this guest less than Jannah. So that's another way to Jannah. Another way to Jannah from the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمْ حَسِبِتُمْ أَنْ تَدُخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ Do you think that you will enter Jannah before you are tried and tested? As those before you were trialed and tested. What trial and test? So, 
they have been infected by hardships of different types. And they have been shaken to the point that the Prophet and the believers with him would ask, when is the victory of Allah? When is the ease that Allah gives after hardships? So Allah says, then the victory of Allah is very, is very near. So Allah is saying here, you will never enter into Jannah before you are tested. Allah said, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do people think that they will be left alone to say, we believe without being trialed? So there is a trial, there is a test for everyone who says he is Muslim, for everyone who says he believes in Allah. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ فَإِذَا أُوذِيَ فِي اللَّهِ جَعَلَ فِتْنَةَ النَّاسِ كَعَذَابِ اللَّهِ Some people, they say, we believe, they declare their man. They say we believe in Allah. But when they are harmed, when they are tested, then what happens? They make this fitna equal to the adab, the torment of Allah. So whatever fitna in this life is nothing. It's nothing because it's temporary. It will never last. And Allah promised some ease after that hardship. But whatever torment in the hereafter, torture, punishment of Allah, it will never be eased. It will never be relieved. It has no end. So don't make them equal. And Allah is telling here, you'll be tested. You just be too, you have to be aware. I'm hasibitum and tadukhulul jannata. So you have to show your sabr and you have to show your jihad and that's, that is the next way to Jannah. So, jihad. Sabr, we, need, we talk about sabr before we know patience, perseverance, resisting, trying to resilience, try to overcome the hardships in your life without complaining about Allah, without showing any resentment, any annoyance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided on you. Try to be, to be strong. So, before doing this, you cannot prove your Iman. And there will be tests. And we are in a test. When you see those who do not have your religious commitments, those who are not religious, whether those who are not Muslims at all, or Muslims who are not practicing, when you see them without any restrictions in their lives, when you see them going right and left, up and down, doing what they like, and you are restricted, that's a test. When you are tested by shortage of what you expected, income expected or whatever else, of prosperity you expect, but you have less, you need to show sabr. You, know, you need to show sabr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِنَّا إِذَا أَذَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنَّا رَحْمَةً ثُمَّ نَزَعْنَاهَا مِنْهُ إِنَّهُ لَيَأُوسٌ كَفُورٌ بعد ذلك بآية أو آيتين يقول إلا الذين صبروا When Allah shows man some of his blessings some of his mercy signs and then he takes it away this man shows nothing but despair hopelessness he doesn't have any he doesn't have any trust that Allah will give him better than what he lost. Or better even than what he expected. Except whom? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ So you have to show sabr in both cases. In when you are given and when you are, the, when you are deprived as well. The next way of Jannah is Jihad. The Jihad. And jihad actually means you exert yourself. You do your best. You do your best to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you will find you in a place where you have to do your best. You have to do it. So you have to do your best, starting from jihad and nafs. And actually this is the most important one. Because you will never be happy to put your life in line before jihad and nafs. Those people, who live under the ground in the tunnels for this month and the hard and the great work they did for years before that 
and the sacrifices they did before that, and the tests and the trials they have experienced. They have experienced over, you, you can say, decades, centuries, generations. They have de done this, and they would never be able to do this before doing jihad on us, before resisting one's desires, one's comfort. You would be sacrificing your comfort. You have to be ready for this. So, those who talk about jihad, and are not able to wake up for Fajr, what goodness, what truthfulness they talk about. They are not serious at all. If you fail just, if you fail to leave your bed in the early morning and have wudu and pray Fajr and listen to what Allah says to you, then you never expect yourself to move forward, one step forward for the physical jihad, which is fighting. And you don't know, we are safe, but one day it may happen. And you have to be ready. So, that is jihad. And Al-Mughira ibn Shu'bah said, the Prophet وسلم, said, Allah committed for any one of us who is killed, means fi sabilillah. Allah committed Jannah. Jannah is for them. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and jalan wa'iyakum ladhin astaghuna qawla fattaruna ahsan. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد رسول الله إمام المتقين اللهم صل وسلم وزر وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذريته ومن دعا بدعوته واتبع سنته وسار على دربه واقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين Brothers, we have been talking about the ways that lead you to Jannah we started with, by the du'a of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma inna nas'alka al-jannata wa ma qarrab ilayha min qawlin aw amal wa na'udhu bika min al-nari wa ma qarrab ilayha min qawlin aw amal O Allah, I ask you Jannah and whatever leads to it whether it be saying or deeds O Allah, I seek refuge with you against the hellfire and whatever leads to it whether it be saying or deeds So we have been through some ways which lead to Jannah. We started by seeking knowledge, and then by showing sabr, patience, and then by visiting the sick. When you go visit the sick, you are in the way to Jannah. When you visit your relatives, Rahim, you are in the way of Jannah. When you visit a brother, fi sabilillah, not because you expect any, you have no any 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 interest. You do not have any benefit by visiting them, one of the benefits, except to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are in the way to Jannah. Jihad is one of the ways to Jannah. Al-Hasan al-Basri radiallahu anhu said, إِنَّ لَكُلِّ طَرِيقٍ مُخْتَصَرًا Every way has a shortcut. Every way, that's what we know from life. You can go, you can take this road, or you can take a shortcut. And the shortcut to Jannah is Jihad. That's what he said. Another way which lead to Jannah as well, is Al-I'tasamu Billah. Allah said, وَمَنْ يَعْتَصُمْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ هُدِيَ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ And whoever sticks to Allah, to the way of Allah, he is really guided to the straight path. And the scholar said, Sirat al-Mustaqim means Al-Jannah. Why? Because Allah said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ لَا يَهْدِيهِمُ اللَّهُ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ those who do not believe in Allah will never be guided by Allah. Will never be guided to Jannah. And they will have Adabun Alim. They will have a severe punishment. So opposite to that, those who stick to the way of Allah, those who stick to the way of Allah, Allah said, فَقَدْ هُدِيَ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ Will be guided to, st to the straight path. Another one, which is the last one for today, the hadith which said, مَنْ نَسِيَ الصَّلَاةَ عَلَيَّ فَقَدْ أَخْطَأَ الطَّرِيقَ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Whoever forgets to send the blessings and salutations to the Prophet ﷺ, he has missed, he slipped out of the way to Jannah. So he's out of the track to Jannah. What does it mean? There is some time when someone reminds you 
with the Prophet, and then you say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin. But the hadith here talks about when you say this initially, from yourself, without anything or anyone reminding you. When you are alone and you then say, say Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin, out of love, out of respect, out of renewing your promise to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, when you do this, you are back to the track. <clears throat> You are on the, way to the, on the way to Jannah again. Otherwise, you missed the way to Jannah. Nas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's Allah, and Yaku, and Aladina, and Sarah, and Kola, and Tarona, and Sana. Allah, and Muslim, and Muslim, and Muslim, and Muslim, and Muslim, and Allah, and Muslim, and Amat, and Nakasami, and Karib, and Mujib, and Dawat. Allah, and Krimna, and Atuina, Allah, and Atina, and Atina, Allah, and Mufana, and Atina, Allah, and Kulana, and Atina, and Atina, اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وعبادك المؤمنين اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وعبادك المؤمنين اللهم انصر اهل غزة المستضعفين اللهم انصر اهل غزة المستضعفين اللهم انهم حفاة فاحملهم اللهم انهم عرايا فاكسهم اللهم انهم مرضى فداوهم اللهم انهم جوعى فاطعمهم اللهم انهم مظلومون فانتصر لهم اللهم انهم مظلومون فانتصر لهم اللهم انهم مغلوبون فانتصر لهم اللهم سدد رميهم اللهم صوب رايهم اللهم اجمعهم على الكلمة الأقوى من والأهدى يا رب العالمين اللهم عليك بعدوك وعدوهم اللهم عليك بيهود يا رب العالمين اللهم إنكم لا يعجزونك اللهم فرق جمعهم اللهم شتت شملهم اللهم زلزل الأرض من تحت أقدامهم اللهم اجعل بأسهم بينهم شديدة اللهم أرنا فيهم آية يا رب العالمين وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتأي القرب ونعم الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه يزيدكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم واقم الصلاه ان الصلاه كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا